Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. Now, for those of you that have been watching my channel for a little while will know that I love to paint mountains. It's one of my favorite subjects to paint, as well as seascapes and landscapes in general, but definitely mountains. I also live here in New Zealand, which is full of mountains as well, so there's plenty of subject matter to paint. Now the other thing about painting mountains is I think it's good for beginners as well because it really helps to get your head around colours and values and making landforms recede into the distance and painting them in a manner that they look like they are in the distance. So in this video I'm going to show you how to paint this mountain landscape, a nice epic mountain to paint and I'm going to specifically give you some tips on creating the colours and values in a manner that makes the mountains look like they're in the distance. Now if you want to see a full length version of this video it's available on my Patreon channel. The video is well over an hour long and I show you the whole process from start to finish. I also show you how to mix all the colours and we talk about tones and values in the composition, creating the composition, how to make those mountains recede into the distance and then other elements in the painting as well. So I've put the link to my Patreon channel in the description box below. So if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. In the meantime get your paintbrushes ready, sit back, relax and let's roll the tape. I'm painting on a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of linen that's oil primed and it's a medium weave linen. What I've done here is I've used loose linen and I've taped it to a board and actually this is really ideal if you want to save space in your studio but also if you want to send your paintings overseas. Very easy to package. I'm using oil paint for this artwork and I'm sketching out my composition using burnt sienna and a medium called liquin which helps to improve the flow of the paint and speeds up the drying time. Now you could just as easily paint this in acrylics as well if you wanted. As I sketch out the composition I'll go over the colours I'm using. I'm using a brand called Blue Ridge Oil Paints and the colours I'm using includes Titanium White, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Red, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue and Thalo Green. Now it's a reasonably limited palette but I believe you can paint any landscape using these colours. Now if you want to get your hands on some Blue Ridge oil paints I've put a link in the description box below. These are awesome artist quality oils to use and they ship worldwide. Whenever I start a painting I always look for where are the dark values and shadows. And I paint these first because I've found that it's easier to paint these first and it helps to create a tonal dynamic within the painting. So value refers to how light or dark a subject is and we'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground. Whereas in the background, especially in mountains, the darks aren't as dark and often lights aren't as light either. So here what I've done is I've started by painting the cloud shadows and then I've moved on to painting the shadows within the mountains themselves. Now these shadows are a mid-tone so we're not going to have dark shadows here because if they were dark it would move forward in the painting and we'd lose the atmospheric depth. So this is one way to help make the mountains look like they're of a great height and that they're sitting in the background. Now another way you can communicate great height in your paintings is to paint the mountain summits near the top of the canvas but still leaving plenty of space to add some sky. I've mixed these mountain shadows with ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, some titanium white and a little alizarin crimson. And I actually use these same colours in the clouds but with more titanium white and for these shadows in the stream here in the foreground. By using similar colours it's going to help create colour harmony within the painting. Now for the trees here, these are some of the darkest values in the painting and I've used a mix of ultramarine blue and a little yellow ochre. Trees tend to have a lot of occlusion shadows within them and often, especially in the case of pine trees, their foliage is quite dark so there'll be a lot of dark shadows in them. 
I've also painted some of the shadows in the foliage in the foreground and midground. Now once all these dark values are in, I've already established that tonal dynamic and I begin painting the areas in light, starting with the furthest zone away and that's the sky and clouds. And I'm painting these cloud highlights here, just using a mix of titanium white with a little burnt sienna. I'm also able to use that same mix to paint the snow on the mountains. And I'm keeping that value a bit darker at this stage, so I've got plenty of room to add lighter layers throughout the painting. And then I'll be adding my final values, my lightest values at the very end. And this is what will really communicate the three-dimensional form of the mountain and make it pop. So as I said, this white here is a little bit darker, mostly using titanium white with some burnt sienna. And there's also a small amount of ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson mixed in there too. So I'm just painting the snow at the tops of the mountains. Now following this I next paint the sky and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with a little bit of phthalo green and some titanium white and I use the sky to actually help form the shape of the clouds painting in the negative spaces around them. Once I've painted the sky and clouds I begin painting the snow shadows within the mountains. Now these shadows, because snow being the lightest value, even the shadows are also going to be relatively light in value, but we also need them a bit darker than the sky so that it still stands out. To paint the snow I'm using a mix of ultramarine blue with titanium white and just a little bit of burnt sienna to desaturate. Not too much though. Also there's a bit of alizarin crimson in there as well. And I'm using a number 5 flat brush here to mark in these snow shadows. Now I use flat brushes a lot for painting my oil paintings, especially painting mountains, and the brushes I'm using are Rosemary & Co brushes. Now you can get your hands on these by clicking on the link below, I've put a link to their website. After painting the snow shadows I then paint the areas of the rock faces that are in the full sunlight. And this is a kind of cold grey colour. And I've again used the same colours that I've used in the cloud shadows and these mountain shadows which was a mix of ultramarine blue, titanium white with some burnt sienna and some alizarin crimson. And you can see on my paint palette here that I'm working off my existing mix that I already used for the mountain shadows and the clouds and I'm just recharging it and readjusting the mix with using more burnt sienna, ultramarine blue and titanium white. Also there was a bit of alizarin crimson in there. But by using these similar colours throughout it's going to create colour harmony within the painting because there's going to be common elements throughout and relationships with each other that's going to tie all the various zones together. Now one of the characteristic things of these mountains, especially in New Zealand, is the mountain grass that grows on them which is a pale kind of straw coloured grass and for this I've mixed yellow ochre with some titanium white, some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Now as I've been using burnt sienna in this mix it's going to help to reduce making green with ultramarine blue being mixed in there. So it's going to be more of a kind of pale straw coloured grass and also low in chroma. And chroma is another word for saturation. So in general in the mountains they're not only often low chroma colours anyway but we want to keep those colours lower in saturation so that they sit back in the landscape because if they're too saturated they're going to jump forward in the painting and we'll lose that atmospheric depth. When it comes to painting the foliage and the pine trees that are in the midground, I can go a lot more saturated with my colours. Also the value is darker as well. For this I've used a mix of ultramarine blue with yellow ochre, some cadmium yellow and this is my basic mix. There's also a little bit of titanium white in there and then I've also rounded off the colour with a little cadmium red. Now red being opposite to green on the colour wheel, it's just going to help to make the green look more organic and it also helps to desaturate it a bit as well. Green can be a tricky colour to work with because it's easy to make them look too artificial or neon so a way we can counteract this is by mixing its colour opposite into the mix which is red. Or a colour that contains red such as a burnt sienna and alizarin crimson or even a cadmium orange, that also works really well with landscape painting. So now here in the midground I'm just marking in some of these bushes and shrubs. 
And then I mark in the stream that's leading the eye towards the mountains. Now this stream is serving quite a key role in this composition because it's creating flow and rhythm within it. And this is known as an S composition. The blue here is mainly reflecting the sky. So I've used the same colors that I used in the sky but just made the value a bit darker. So this was ultramarine blue with a little phthalo green and titanium white. Now a little bit later on in the blocking in stage I actually decided to make the stream a bit wider because I felt that it was too narrow. I also added more interest in the painting. Now next I painted this silty sand and pebbles that are on the banks of the river here in the floodplain. And again this is the same colour combination that I've used in the clouds and the mountains. A mix of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, titanium white and alizarin crimson. So that's going to tie that zone together with the mountains. The foreground, the mountains, the clouds, shadows and the mountain shadows. So it's all tying these together and it's creating relationships. And it's also carrying across that colour harmony because I'm using similar colours throughout. So this is a way you can create nice looking paintings that read well to the viewer. Now once I'd worked on the foreground and midground, I then went across the whole painting and restated the dark values, especially some of these mountain shadows because they were a little bit too light and I needed to make them a bit darker. But then at the same time, I could also paint some of these exposed rock faces as well. They're in shadow, so the same colours that I was using before, but with less titanium white in it to make the value darker. Now at this point in the painting, I'm finishing up the blocking in stage by restating some of the dark values in the scene, such as in these pine trees here, just tidying up their forms and also just adding some more details to the foreground and midground in general. It's at this stage of the painting that I just want to check that all my values and my colours are working and that I'm getting that atmospheric depth as well. And then when this is done, I allow the painting to dry. Now I'm using Liquin Original, which helps to speed up the drying time, but I usually leave it for a few days anyway. Now here it was a few days later, the painting was dry and then I started adding more details to the mountains. Now what I'm doing here is I'm making my layers lighter than the previous layer so that I can build up the three dimensional form. So here painting in these snow shadows using the same colours as before but just making some of those layers lighter than the previous layer. Following that I then work on the areas of the snow that's in the full sunlight. And again using the same colours that I was using during the blocking in stage which was titanium white but with a little bit of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and some alizarin crimson but really just a tiny amount this time because I want the layer to be lighter than the previous layer so it's building up the form of the snow. I'll be saving my lightest values until the end of course. Now following this I really start to add more detail to the mountain building up the form overall, painting some of the areas of the exposed rocks especially the ones that are in shadow and then painting some more of those rock highlights, that cold grey colour. Again I'm using the same colours that I was using during the blocking stage but making the values lighter than the previous layer. And most of these colours are all centred around ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, a little alizarin crimson and titanium white. I try to keep my colour mixes as simple as possible and also carry them across throughout the painting. But by using fewer colours in my mixes, it also helps to create cleaner colour. Now this isn't always possible, especially when you're painting things like trees and foliage, but where I can, I try and use less colours in my paint mixes. So here I'm just painting the highlights on some of these exposed rocks. Then. At this point in the painting there wasn't really much left to do on the mountains because I actually had to wait for it to dry again so that I could add the final highlights. Although what I'm doing here is I'm adding a few highlights to the lower section of the mountain. This is where I'm painting some of that mountain grass again using the same colours that I used during the blocking stage but there is more titanium white in the mix. Now I painted this artwork over about three sessions I quite often do my painting in the evening and during this session this is where I was adding more details and really working on the forms of all the elements within the scene. 
So for now the mountain there isn't much left to do until I add the final details and highlights at the end. So here I was working on the trees in the midground, adding more shadows and details to the foliage. And then I moved on to the foreground where I spent the rest of the time working on the water. So adding more layers to that and then adding more lighter layers to start communicating the ripples that are in the water and some of that sky reflection as well. I've mostly been using a number three filbert brush because I really like that rounded edge, it's really good for painting ripples. At this point in the painting it was really starting to come together and all that there was left to do was to add the final details in there and also the lightest values which I've been saving till the end. Now as I said before the lightest values are here in the snow and I've used a mix of titanium white with just a small amount of yellow ochre and that just helps to warm up the white. But you can see how much lighter that is now than the previous layer. So I'm adding these highlights a lot more sparingly but it's also helping to build up more of those jagged forms within these mountain peaks. I used a number three filbert brush and just worked my way across the top of the mountains. And then I used a much smaller number zero round brush to paint some of those really fine details within the exposed rock faces on the upper section of the mountains. Now the last thing I do here to complete the painting was I added more details to the pine trees and the foliage in the midground and then details in the water so really communicating those ripples. It's more faster flowing within the middle of the stream but it's not particularly fast flowing water. But here I'm just using lighter layers of blue and the same colours that I was using before, just a mix of titanium white with a little ultramarine blue, phthalo green and some titanium white. Then one of the last things I did for this painting was to paint the suggestion of rocks and pebbles in the floodplain at the banks of the stream here. And I'm using a number zero round brush. Now in the actual reference photos there was lots of pebbles and too many to paint really so what I normally do is I just paint the suggestion of a few and just let the human brain fill in the rest of the information. But it was at this point the painting was complete. Now the one cool thing I love about painting on loose linen is getting to peel off the masking tape right at the end of the painting and this is where you can see the whole painting revealed without the mess around the edge of it where the paint's gone onto the masking tape. And so I peeled off the masking tape to reveal the painting. I even filmed it on my iPhone for some of my social media channels. One last thing about painting mountains, I reckon these are really good to learn to paint, especially if you're a beginner at painting because it helps to get your head around colours and values and receding landforms that go into the distance. I have to say I really enjoyed painting this artwork. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Also feel free to leave me a comment in the comments section below. Now if you want to learn more about painting landscapes and seascapes then check out the painting resources I have on my website. I've got a painting blog there full of lots of written painting tutorials including lesson notes that accompanies this video as well and I've put the link in the description box below. I also have full length painting tutorial videos for sale as well and as I said earlier you can see the full length version of this video video on my Patreon channel and also all my other full length videos as well. There's about two years worth of videos on there all covering different aspects of landscape painting so it's like a landscape painting course and you can access this for just five dollars a month or for fifty one dollars for an annual subscription where you save fifteen percent. So as I say links are in the description box below. Lastly, if you sign up to my email list, I'm giving away a free ebook on introduction to oil painting. Again, all the links are in the description box below. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspires you to paint some mountains. Thanks for watching, have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.